Hey everyone, Dev with Crime Hive, and in this true crime video, we're going to discuss the April Logan murder and this clue in her past that was strongly linked to her death. In another case, we're going to discuss a man in Florida who viciously attacked two boys with a hammer and a knife. All right, before we get into it again, Dev with Crime Hive, if you like these kind of true crime videos, consider subscribing to my channel. If you do that, just be sure to hit the bell notification next to that, as that will give you more updates on this case and other cases that I am currently involved with as well. Now, let's talk about this case here. You've got April Logan. She's only 22 years old, worked at Target, and was very loved, had, had, a, had a great group of friends, and she was murdered essentially by her boyfriend right here, 25 year old Matthew Coglio. Now, to give you some context here, I'm gonna give you a couple facts of this case and how this really came about. As you can see from this article here, 13 News Now, you can see that they're, they're gathering to remember her, very distraught obviously, it's a very sad case. And what we learned is this took place not very long ago. This was on the 22nd of August, so just days ago from the making of this video. And police were called out to an apartment complex. This was in the 1000 block of Blackwater Way, about 7.30 in the morning. And just to give you some, some more context too, this appears to be in that area. Looks like an apartment complex right there. And takes place in Newport, News, Virginia. So police arrive and out comes Matthew. He has blood on his hands, he has blood on his face, and he has blood on his shoe. Now, they ask him what happened, obviously, and he said that he was in his house watching videos on firearm safety when the gun went off. So that was his reason. This is extremely early in the morning, and so of course, as police are investigating, what do they do? They start interviewing other people around there. It's an apartment complex. Oftentimes with these types of cases, there is some sort of witness that either saw or heard something. Now, in this case, neighbors reported hearing loud arguing. They heard an angry man's voice coming from the apartment the night before and early into the morning. So that's where we learn about that. They ultimately arrested him. Now. We learned, and this is the clue in the past that I want to talk about, and this is really important here. So we've learned that Matthew apparently had a summons issued for him back in July of 2018 for assault. So there was a restraining order issued against him, all right? And this and this takes place, the, the restraining order was from August 16th, 2018 until August 16th, 2020. So just days prior, this restraining order was lifted. Okay, so it was a two-year restraining order. And then shortly after, April's killed, right? So it, it's, uh, it, and here's the important part that I wanna talk about with that previous incident in 2018. So in that statement, we learned that Coglio, Matthew, he had been drinking and apparently pushed April. She fell backwards into a dresser, hit the back of her head, and this is the important part, Matthew apparently had choked her, okay? That is a huge red flag when you hear about choking. You hear about a lot of assaults and there's unfortunately an uptick in domestic violence cases, especially now with people staying at home. And, and, it, and it's, it's a very big issue. Anytime there is mention of choking, that is a serious issue. And just to give you guys some more information on that, an expert here, uh, strongly predicts homicide when, when there's cases of choking and law enforcement takes it very seriously. There's a lot of documentation involved and I'll talk a little bit about that as well. And you, you have Gail Strack here, the CEO of Alliance for Hope. She says that choking is the most lethal form of domestic violence and has been long overlooked in domestic or sexual violence cases. She said victims who have been choked once are 750% more likely to be killed by their abusers and that choking is considered a strong predictor of homicide. So that is a huge, huge issue there. 
And when I heard about the choking, it immediately perked my interest in that. So a couple of things here that I just want to mention when it comes to strangulation. Oftentimes, law enforcement will go out and they ask a lot of questions if there's a domestic violence case here. They start looking at the the person involved. And, and, and I'll talk about a, a few very interesting indicators of choking. Now, a lot of things that will happen is you'll have with the face, it'll be red or flushed. There will be scratch marks potentially. You've got uh, when you're looking at the voice in throat or hearing, when you're hearing the voice, it, it will sound raspy or hoarse. You'll hear coughing. They're unable to speak or they're having trouble swallowing. It's painful to swallow. Nausea, drooling. Uh, and then you start looking around the mouth. It may be a sw there may be a swollen tongue, swollen lips, bruising. Now, this is a really strong indicator as well, and it's called petechia to the eyeballs. If you guys have heard of that, Petechia, and I'll show a picture here. It can happen with the eyelid, the eyeball, and what it looks like here is these little dots, these little red dots around the eye indicates petechia, which could mean that somebody has been choked. Um, oftentimes, someone can go unconscious. They can become dizzy. They can go out for a few seconds or they can go completely unconscious. And sometimes when you're looking at the eyes, I'll show another image here. It'll be very red, uh, throughout the eye there. So that's another strong indicator of choking. So you, you start looking at all these things, the, you know, the, the ligature marks, you, you know, difficulty breathing, and you ask them a lot of those questions to determine what happened. So that was the big clue I wanted to talk about. Again, it's a very serious issue. Now, unfortunately, she's, she's dead. They did charge Matthew with second degree murder it appears right now uh, looks like there's going to be more information coming in this case i believe saturday he's going to uh, a hearing a court hearing so still still learning more information about this but again very very sad and now i want to talk about another case as well that happened recently and this is in connection to this man named mark wilson 30 years old kills two boys, 12 and 14 years old. And we've got Tayton and Robert here. They were viciously killed, the Baker brothers here. And mom apparently, and this, this takes place days ago as well. So this takes place, and I'll just look at the notes here, August 26th, 2020, all right? Very, very recent. Now, apparently on this night, mom, wakes up to find her boys dead. She apparently had slept through this incident. And what we've learned here, just to give you some context on this as well, is this man right here, right? He, Mark, he lived with the family, all right? He lived in a shed. Apparently, he's a family friend. They knew him. They were looking to help him out. And he had a girlfriend. They lived in the shed. And the family had just moved to that area. This takes place in, uh, so you've got Melrose, Florida. They had just moved there. Now, going through this article here, so what happens is the, it, so they had just moved from Polk County to Melrose, which is just south of Jacksonville, 16 days ago, okay? Now, what, what we learned is Mark had an extensive history of drug and property crimes, and apparently he had no previous arrests for violent crimes, so very curious to learn more about this situation, about uh, what you know if, if, if he was possibly on some type of drug or if there was something else involved. You know why the the two children were killed essentially in their bed, in their room, and other family members were not killed. So still, it says they're still working to determine the motive in this case. And what happened? What we learned is is. Apparently, this was extremely vicious without mercy. I mean, uh, they're saying he attacked these two kids without mercy and viciously attacked them with a knife and a hammer. Police did recover those weapons within 48 hours. Don't know where they came from. Don't know if it was in the shed of, of that property or, or really how this came about. He's supposed to be due in court, and I think I may have mixed up the other one. He's supposed to be due in court tomorrow on Saturday, so we may learn more information on that as far as a motive. But uh, again, another very sad story, tragic case. 
involved with that. That's another picture of him. He's in jail, and people are you know, the, the the court system prosecutors are looking for the death penalty in this case in Florida. And now the last thing I want to point out here in this case, is, and I'd shown this earlier, there is a GoFundMe page that has been linked with these children and you know for funeral costs and and, and that sort of thing they've already raised over twelve thousand dollars their goal is twenty thousand if you're interested in supporting this fundraiser you can simply donate it's very simple here if you go to their gofundme you can just click on the donate button you can enter an amount and then it has you just put in your credit card information to do that so just wanted to leave with that right there again this is dev with crime hive I'll see you in another video soon. Thanks.